Hi everyone. I um, am following up from my last video that I did on the blood moons and coming up to the pivotal point. I've had a number of folk um, want to know more information about the seed of Cain, the origins and the curse. So I thought, why not share with you the information that I've got uh, and read straight out of the ancient books. So um, this might be a little bit of a long video. I'll try to keep it just to the point of what I'm doing because there's a lot of information in here. Um, so I'll get going with it. I'm going to start with the Aramark and Palestinian Targum. This is the first five books of the Bible, uh, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And it's when it was very first written down when the Israelites went into the Babylonian captivity. So we're talking around, I don't know, I suppose it's about 500 BC, um, the time of Jeremiah and Ezra, etc. cetera. Um, so it was written down. This is the first uh, um, recording of the full Torah put down, and it's in there. And you'll see when we read the King James how much has been taken out or slightly changed, which really doesn't um, give us the information that we need to be able to work out who's who at the zoo and how and why things are as they are today. And, you know, it just comes to mind what Yahushua said in the Gnostic texts is, you will not know the end until you work out the beginning. So unless you know who's who and the bloodlines, you won't be able to work out why things are the way they are and why people think the way they think and do what they do. And it all comes down to their fathers and their seed line. Um, of course, there's always exceptions to the rule, but this is just... Um, generalizing how people can be really so wicked and do things um and and it's because it's in them to do that so anyway let's get going so we're going to start with chapter three and the serpent was wiser unto evil than all the beasts of the field which the lord god had made and he said to the woman is it truth that the Lord God had said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, from the rest of the fruits of the trees of the garden, we have power to eat. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, the Lord had said, you shall not eat of it, nor approach it, lest you die. In that hour, the serpent spake accusation against his creator and said to the woman, dying, you will not die. For every artificer hateth the son of his art. For it is manifest before the law that in the day that you eat of it, you will be as the great angels who are wise to know between good and evil. And the woman beheld Semiel, the angel of death, and was afraid. Yet she knew that the tree was good to eat and that it was medicine for the enlightenment of the eyes and desirable tree by means of which to understand. And she took of its fruit and did eat and she gave to her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of both were enlightened and they knew that they were naked, divested of the purple robe in which they had been created. And they saw the sight of their shame and sowed to themselves the leaves of figs, and made to them centuries. And the Jerusalem text says, vestments. And they heard the voice of the Lord, of the word of the Lord God, walking in the garden in the repose of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from before the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Is it not? Is not all the world which I have made manifest before me, the darkness as the light? Excuse me. <laughs> and how hast thou thought in thy heart to hide from me the place where you conceal? I do I not see? Where are the commandments that I commanded thee? And the voice of the word 
heard I in the garden and I was afraid because I'm naked and the commandment which thou didst teach me, I have transgressed. Therefore I hid myself from shame and he said, who shall, who showed thou that you are naked unless thou hast eaten of the tree, oh, sorry, of the fruit of the tree of which I commanded that they shouldn't eat? And Adam said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord said to the woman, What hast thou done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me with his subtlety, and deceived me with his wickedness, and I ate. And the Lord God brought the three unto judgment, and he said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, cursed art thou of all the cattle, of all the beasts of the field, and upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thy feet shall be cut off. And thy skin thou shalt cast away once in seven years, and the poison of death shall be in thy mouth, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed of thy son, and the seed of her sons. And it shall be when the sons of of the woman keep the commandments of the law they will be prepared to smite thee upon the head and when they forsake the commandments of the law thou wilt be ready to wound them in their heel nevertheless for them there shall be a medicine but for thee there will be no medicine and they shall be a remedy for the heel in the days of King Messiah. And then it talks in the Jerusalem text, it says basically the same thing. Not until we, we consider the law and obey Yah's law that, um, that we will be free. Nevertheless, there will be medicine for the sons of the woman. But for these serpent, there shall be no medicine, but it is to be that for these, there shall be a remedy for the heel in the days of the King Messiah. It goes on about other things. I won't read it all. Um, okay, we'll scoot down to chapter 4. And Adam knew Harbour, which is Eve, his wife, who had desired the angel. And she conceived and bare Cain. And I said, I have acquired a man, the angel of the Lord. And she added to bear from her husband. So there's a distinction there. Adam, his twin, Abel, it calls it Habel here. And Habel was a shepherd of the flock, but Cain was a man working in the earth. And it was in the days of the 14th of Nisan, which is Passover, that Cain brought of the produce of the earth the seed of cotton, an oblation of the first things before the Lord. And Habel brought the first things of the flock and of their fat, and it was pleasing before the Lord. And he gave countenance to Abel and to Habel to his oblation. But to Cain and to his oblation he gave no countenance. And Cain was greatly angered. And the features of his face were downcast. And the Lord said to Cain, Why hast thou anger? And why are the features of thy face downcast? If you do the work well, will, thou not, will not thy guilt be forgiven thee? But if thou dost not work well in the world, thy sin is retained until the day of the great judgment. And at the door of thy doors of thy heart lieth thy sin. And into thy hand I have delivered the power over evil passion, and unto thee shall be the inclination thereof, that thou mayest have authority over it to become righteous or to sin. Uh, and it goes on, I could read it all, but I don't want it to, to be so long, about the conversation that Cain and Abel had, and of course he murders his, his brother. <clears throat> and then... Yahushua comes to him, the Lord, 
He drove a stone into his forehead and killed him. And the Lord says, where are you? Where is thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I not the keeper of my brother? And he said, Why hast, what hast thou done? The voice of the bloods of the murderer of thy brother, which are swallowed up in the sod, crieth before me from the earth. And now, because thou hast killed him, thou art cursed from the earth, which has op opened the mouth and received the bloods of thy brother from thy hand. When thou tillest the earth, it shall not add to give strength to its fruit for thee. A wanderer and an exile shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said before the Lord, More heavy is my rebellion than can be borne away. Yet is there power before thee to forgive it. Behold, thou hast cast me forth today from the face of the earth and from before thee. Is it possible to be hidden? And because I am a wanderer and an exile in the earth, any just one who findeth me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Behold now, anyone who killeth Cain unto seven generations, vengeance shall be taken of him. And the Lord sealed upon the face of Cain the mark of the great name, great of the name, great and honorable, that anyone who might find him should not kill him when he saw it upon him. Just going through it because there's a lot in here. Um, <clears throat> Okay, and Cain went out from before the Lord and dwelt in the land, wandering of his exile, which had been made for him from before as the Garden of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Hanok and built a city. Okay, so now we're going to start going down through the generations. Um, so Hanok, Irad, Michaela Jal, Methusahal, Lamech. And Lamech took to him two wives. The name of the first is Ada, and the name of the second is Zila. And Ada Bill bore, sorry, Jabal, who was the chief of all those who dwell in tents and are masters of cattle. And the name of his brother was Jabal. Juval, J U instead of J A V A L. And he was a chief of those who took part in song with the lyre and the pipe. And Zela bore, this was uh, his wife, Zela bore Tubal Cain, the chief of all artificers, who knew, so who know the workmanship of brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Naam. She was mistress of Elgis, Elgis, sorry, and songs. And Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zela, Hear my voice, wives of Lamech, hearken unto me. For I have not killed a man that I should be slain for him, neither have I destroyed a young man on whose account my children shall perish. For Cain, who sinned and was converted by repentance, had protection unto seven generations extended to him. And to Lamech, the son of his son, who had not sinned, it is just that it shall be extended unto seventy and seven. Yeah, it's missed out the story why that is, but I'm going to bring that in in the other books. So Cain had grace extended to him for seven generations. Lamech had it extended for 70 and seven. Now, chapter five, I just want to make one point here. It says, Abel was killed by 
um, Cain's hand, and Cain was cast out. Neither is his seed um, generalized, or ge um, generalized in the book of the genealogy of Adam. So when you do some study and you put all these wee bits together, you come to the conclusion that I have. Let's just keep reading and see what you guys think. Okay, so that's the Targum. The writings of Abraham. Zen's put it together um, in English. These have come, a lot of these have come from out of the Vatican or just ancient scrolls. So we're going to read from chapter 11, the very short chapters. Eleven verse thirteen. No, chapter eleven, beg your pardon. And when Noah was four hundred and fifty years old, he begat a son and called his name Jepheth. Forty two years later he begat another son from her, uh, the mother of Jepheth, and he called his name Shem. Eight years later, Noah begat a son of his wife, Naam, who was of the seed of Cain, and he called his name Ham. For he said, through him will the curse be preserved in the land. Chapter 12. Now Noah had known a wife of the seed of Cain, and she was a righteous woman. Nevertheless, the curse remained with her seed according to the word of the Lord. And Noah took her, on this wise. For the word of the Lord came unto Noah, saying, Take unto thyself Naam, the daughter of Lamech, who dwelleth here in the city of thy fathers. For she hath been faithful to my gospel, wherefore I shall preserve through her the seed of Cain through the flood. Thus Lamech, who was the father of Naam, was of the seed of Cain, being the son of Methusiel, the son of Mahajil, the son of Irad, the son of Enoch, the son of Cain. Lamech had married Adar and Zila, the daughters of Canaan, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam. Now, Adar bore children unto Lamech, but Zila was barren until her old age when the Lord opened her womb and she conceived and bore a son and a daughter. And she named her son Tubal Cain, saying, After I have withered away, have I obtained from obtained him from the Almighty God? And her daughter was named Naam, saying, After I had withered away, have I obtained pleasure and delight. Chapter thirteen. While Naam was yet a child, great consternation fell upon the seed of Cain. For Irad, the son of Enoch, the son of Cain, had become a member of the secret combination and was privy to all its secrets until one night when the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Irad, thou hast done evil instead of good and hast followed after Satan rather than God. Wherefore, I shall destroy thee and thy house when I send in the floods upon the earth. But Arad was pricked in his heart and pled with the Lord to show mercy and preserve his seed through the great flood. Seeing that his penitence was true, the Lord said to him, Arad, if thou wilt repent and reveal the secret and reveal the evils of the secret combination unto the sons of Seth, I will have mercy upon thee, and I will join thy seed unto the seed of Seth, that it may be preserved through the great flood. Wherefore Arad went forth and began to reveal the secrets of the sons of Cain unto the sons of Seth. And Lamech, being Master Mahan at that time, found Arad, sitting in his garden with Joram 
the young son of Irad, and slew him. Lamed slew Arad for the sake of the oath of the secret combination, and he slew Arad's son with him. But Tubal Cain and son of Lamech had followed him and viewed his evil deed which he had committed, and he revealed it unto his mother Zila, and she unto her sister Ada. Wherefore Ada and Zila confronted Lamech with this evil and cursed him in the name of the Lord for having slain Irad, who had repented of his wickedness from among the sons of men. And Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zila, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wandering and a young man to my herd. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech shall be seventy and sevenfold. Lamech's wives, therefore, feared to confront him further. But Lamech repented not of his evil deeds, and finding his son Tubal Cain in prayer, he slew him for having revealed his murders. And when Ada, Ad, so Adha and Zila, the wives of Lamech, learned of this, they took their remaining sons and daughters and went to their father in Canaan's city and re revealed the remainder of the secrets of the evil combination among the sons of Adam. Thus did Naam come to dwell among the sons of Adam, and she grew up before the Lord in righteousness, and was known for her tender care towards the sick and the unfortunate. Nevertheless, she had not husband, because she was of the forbidden race. When the word of the Lord came unto Noah, saying, Take unto thyself Naam, the daughter of Lamech, who dwelleth here in the city of thy fathers, for she has been faithful to my gospel, wherefore I shall preserve through her the seed of Cain through the flood. Noah went unto his father Methuselah. Methuselah inquired of the Lord and returned his word unto his son Lamech, saying, Thus saith the Lord my handmaiden, Naam have I given unto my son Noah, that the seed of Cain might be preserved through the great flood which I will send upon the earth. Wherefore, let not my son Noah fear to take her to wife, for in doing so he shall be blessed, for through him will come all nations. Wherefore say unto him, Noah, my son, I have looked upon the evils of the sons of man which have come up before me, and they have corrupted the whole world, save only the city in which thou dwellest. And it goes on through that. So chapter 16, Thus did Noah take to wife and arm the daughter of Zelah, the wife of Lamech, of the seed of Cain. And she bore him a son and named him Ham. And thus was the curse preserved in the land throughout the great flood. Okay, I'll leave that at that. Next book. Talk about Cain's death in the book of Jasher, chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 23 to 31, if you have the book. And in the days... Sorry, and in the end of days and years, when Zela became old, the Lord opened her womb, and she conceived and bore a son and named him Tudor Cain, saying, After I have withered away, I have obtained from the Almighty God. And she conceived again and bore a daughter and called her name Naam. For she said, After I have withered away, I have obtained pleasure and delight. And Lamech was old and advanced in years. 
and his eyes were dim that he could not see, and Tubal Cain, his son, was leading him. And it was one day that Lamech went into the field, and Tubal Cain, his son, was with him. And whilst they were walking in the field, Cain, the son of Adam, it says the son of Adam because he was the first from Adam and Eve, but advanced towards them, but he was of the serpent seed, advanced towards them, for Lamech was very old and could not see much. And Tubal Cain, his son, was very young. And Tubal Cain told his father to draw his bow, and with the arrows he smote Cain, who was yet far off. And he slew him, and he appeared to them to be an animal. And the arrow entered Cain's body, although he was distant from them. And he fell to the ground and died. And the Lord requited Cain's evil according to his wickedness, which he had done to his brother Abel, according to the word of the Lord which he had spoken. And then it goes on. And it came to pass when Cain had died that Lamech and Tubal went to see the animal which he had slain. And they saw, and behold, Cain, their grandfather, was fallen dead upon the earth. And Lamech was very much grieved at having done this. And in clapping his hands together, he struck his son and caused his death. And the wives of Lamech heard, and it goes on about that. So that's the death of Cain, seven generations later. He died. So just according to the word of the Lord, so that shall be. And then I thought I would read from our Bible, which we all probably have a copy of, which is the King James, chapter 3. And you will see, as we read this, that there is a lot that our Bible does not have in it. Um which is why it's so important to read the ancient texts, you know. Um, the King James Bible, in my personal view, is not accurate. They have taken out so much and they've inserted other things as well, such as I believe the word J has been inserted because the J has only existed for a few hundred years. And our English language is a language of trickery. It's it's you, when you go back through these ancient um, languages, the words that they use are so full of meaning, whereas our words can be construed in the English language to mean different things. Um, anyway, it's what we've got, and it's what we've got to work with. That's why we have to ask, um, yeah, for His Holy Spirit to help us to soon because we need it and we need to cross-reference things. So anyway, I'll just um, read chapter 3 and 4. Um, well, I mean, chapter... Three, it talks about, you know, taking of the fruit as it does in the other books. Verse 13, and the Lord said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above all beasts of the field, and upon thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall thou eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. There's a distinction. So the seed that is of the satanic serpent seed line and the seed that is of, you know, the unaltered seed line as Yah made it. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And then it goes on through that. Um, yeah. 
and then chapter four, I was just going to read about, yeah, chapter four, verse 13, after he killed Abel, uh, verse 13, and Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from Thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Where, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding shall kill him. Now it's interesting that this text says, Vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold who kills him but the other texts say that he will be he will be protected basically for seven generations so just a sleight of hand how these scriptures don't always give us what's written in other texts such as the Aramaic Targum which was written before this this was taken from the Targum and put condensed down So, and then it goes down about the story with um, Tubal Cain and, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll read it. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bore Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city Enoch after his son. And unto Enoch was born Irad and Irad begat. Mahuja Il, and Mahuja Girl begat Methuselah Il, and Methuselah Il begat Lamek, and Lamek had two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zila, and Ada bore Jabil, Jabil, and he was the father that dwelt in tents and had much cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal, and he was the father of uh of all such as handled the harp and the organ. And Zila also bore Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificial and brass and iron, and the sister of Tubal Cain was Naam. So there's the seven generations. And Lamech said to his wives, Adar and Zila, hear my voice, my wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. So we now know what that is um, because of the writings of Abraham. And it was because he was given uh, up the, um, the secret writings of, the, um, of Cain. So... So then it says, if Cain was shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. If you don't have the knowledge of what I read, you wouldn't know what that means. And it wasn't that they were avenged sevenfold, they had protection for sevenfold of years, of generations, and Lamech seventy and sevenfold. So if we go by that, as I had said in my other recording, it was about a thousand years, say, because I lived such a long time back then, um, and there were hundreds of years before they had children, I'm estimating, I haven't done the numbers, and maybe I should, uh, to see how old Cain was uh, when all this happened, when he died, um, when Lamech killed him. But let's just say roughly a thousand, and then seventy times seven is forty nine. Add the zero, four hundred and ninety, and then make it a generation. Let's put another zero on there. Although a generation could be seventy years, and it can be a hundred years, depending on, I don't know, on maybe the um, the meaning of it. So that comes to four thousand nine hundred plus another 5,900, so you're rounding it up to 6,000 years, that this generation that from Lamech 
who had killed Cain, um, is. So that gets lifted uh, around the 6,000 years. So that's all those that are on the world today that are of the satanic Cain lineage. Um, which I personally believe are the nefarious ones of today. You know, how we, there's a lot of talk about the lizards and the queen, and you know, <laughs> Rothschilds and all of those. I mean, I'm not saying it is them, but my thoughts are that it's very likely that it is them. But they have been protected. They have been here. God's allowed it. But there will come a time where he says, well, that's enough now, and it will be the end of those times. So I just wanted to to read those to you to, so you'd have a little bit more depth of understanding on that, and you can acquire these books through the sacredwordpublishing.com and Amazon, uh, and there are other books around. I just want to alert before I finish that Chapter 5 of the King James Bible um, talks about Adam and his lineage. and um, it starts with Seth. Now, if Cain was his son, would it not start with him, especially being that he went out and built cities? And there's a recording here in our scriptures about him. Why is he not put there under Adam's lineage as a the recording of his lineage? Um, we need to think about these things and consider. Yeah, so... Anyway, I think that's all that I've done for the readings for now. So I hope that's given a little bit more understanding of the stories and of what's happened here. Okay, this would be his name for preserving these wonderful books and these scriptures for us so that we can study. And it's, what is it it says? It's the, it's the, um, it's the, the work of kings to seek out a matter and to put these wee things into um, consideration and to ponder on these things. Yeah, all right. This would be his name. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll stop this.